Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing the series, Sega Racing Renaissance, where we review every single 3D arcade racing game Sega's ever released in a retrospective fashion. And today we have a combo episode for two very big reasons that I'll get into in a little bit. We're going to be taking a look at Star Wars Racer Arcade, as well as NASCAR Racing, both on the Sega Hikaru board. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But right off the top, you're going to see we just have two pod racers that we can choose from. You need to unlock other ones, and I've never played the game long enough to be able to do so. And the reason that this is a combo episode, the first big reason, is this is running under Sega Hikaru emulation, which at best is spotty. Now, I would have gone out and bought a Hakaru board to review these games on this series, even if it would have lost me a metric crap ton of money. That is just my personality, and I've been looking for Hakaru for a long time. Why did I not do that? Because Sega Hakaru's break, if you so much sneeze at them, you cannot ship them, you need to buy them locally. But that doesn't mean that I don't want to talk about the games, because there is some fun to be had, and I'll touch a little bit more on how bad Hakaru is in just a moment. I will say off the bat, I don't care about Star Wars. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's bad. It's just not an interest point to me. So I'm looking at this game just from a racing perspective and not from being any sort of fan of Star Wars. And I will say what's on offer here is relatively fun. Now it's definitely not an arcade car racing game. So the mechanics of how the ship turns are completely different because obviously it is hovering over the ground. So you basically need to retrain your brain completely as to how to play this game. And if you've been playing a bunch of arcade racing games from Sega before you got to this, you end up having a hard time like I am here. Hitting the wall is always going to happen. You're traveling at such high speeds and you need to start your turn so quickly that if there's a ship in your way, you're basically guaranteed to have to either bump and run or rub up against the wall. It doesn't mean it's not fun, it just means you need to retrain your perspective on what to expect out of the game. Now I do wish I had more courses though, it only really has three, and a variation on the first one as a hard mode, so it's not bringing a ton to the table off the start. And you can 100% understand why this never came home from arcades because it's a licensed game from Star Wars and it didn't really have that much content. And why this is also a combo episode is that Hikaru emulation is just a little bit flaky. It does work, you can experience the games, but basically there's an issue with some of the texture layers ending up above where they should be on the ground plane of the game itself. And this water just keeps coming up into the play area, and it looks a bit ugly, which is unfortunate. But at least the game plays decently, I mean we have that going for us, which is always a fun time. And normally I would let you listen to some of the soundtrack, but I can't for Star Wars Pod Racer because the minute I stop talking and that music comes up, a copyright flag goes on immediately to the video. You can't touch anything with Disney music these days because Disney owns Star Wars. You're just going to have to take my word at it that if you like the music in Star Wars, you're going to love the stuff here. If you don't really like the music in Star Wars, you're not really going to care about the music in this game because it is all just borrowed straight from the movies from what I can tell. Again, not being a Star Wars expert. But it's just a ton of fun and I wish that I could find a board for this game because I know if I actually had it in my possession and didn't have to deal with some of the emulation issues, I would probably enjoy it more. But from a curiosity standpoint, if you download the most recent version of Demule, Dreamcast, Naomi, and Hikaru emulator, you can experience it in your own time. And that is a ton of fun. But right now it's game over and it's on to the second game in the Hikaru episode, which is going to be NASCAR Arcade. And interestingly, if you look this game up, it's going to mention Electronic Arts. They did not develop the game, Sega made this in-house for the Hikaru, but Electronic Arts was the license holder for NASCAR racing games, and they sub it over to Sega. Now this one is a little bit of a mixed bag. I don't care for NASCAR. I have absolutely nothing against the sport, nor do I have anything against the people that enjoy it. If it's your thing, that's awesome. But just turning left around an oval in an arcade racing game doesn't really do it for me that much. I will say that it's quite a competent racing game, and it is fun to play. It just doesn't have the same sort of thrill that something like Daytona USA is going to have even if you are racing around an oval. Because this one plays way closer to a sim than it does an arcade racing game. It's nowhere near the level of something like Gran Turismo in that sim aspect, but it feels very intentional. Driving around the course, drifting behind the cars, and trying to get to the right position to extend your time, 
is definitely more sim feeling although i do love what they did with the time extension it's not just a lap checkpoint system you need to get to the next position to get more time on the clock if you don't do that you don't continue so you're constantly trying to bump and run and get to the position you need to get a time extension but i will say the game has relatively fun soundtrack as well so go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and i'll come back and talk more about nascar arcade and the hikaru in general but enjoy It's a kind of funny and fun soundtrack and kind of reminds me of Days of Thunder in that sort of very cheesy way. But you'll see here we did finish the race in a decent position. And this game does want me to come back and play it some more. It makes me want to see the number one spot, even though I've never been able to do so. But it gives you a ton of licensed characters. I guess they're not characters, they're really human beings. And we're going to be using Dale Earnhardt. I know he's the Intimidator, unless I got that wrong, leave me a comment down below. But honestly, like I said, don't really know much about NASCAR. And I will say that once you get onto the tracks that have actual turns in them, the physics and handling system of this game doesn't do as good of a job as when you're just turning left on an oval. I immediately go into the gravel on the side of the course here, and once you get too far behind, it becomes almost impossible to catch up because the AI opponent cars are extremely good at navigating the course in this game. Maybe a little bit too good, honestly. Now, of course, this is under emulation, so maybe the controls are a little bit strange. If you know of a Sega Hikaru board for sale in the Midwest within driving distance of Chicago, leave me a comment down below. I will drive it and pick it up and redo this video if I can find one. And it's just because they are so delicate. You can't really ship them. They forgot to tin some of the chips on the motherboard. And even the slightest bump just make entire silicon chips pop off the motherboard like they're on a trampoline. It is a very disappointing situation. But at least Hikaru emulation exists. Not talking about the game, but talking about the technology. The Hikaru was a variant of the Dreamcast and the Naomi that was much more powerful in certain respects. It had certain shaders and features on the GPU side of the board. It was a very specialized piece of equipment for Sega. And it has some decent games, Planet Harriers being the best of the bunch. But it did have two Sega arcade racing games, and that's why we're emulating it here, even if you do see from time to time some slight graphical glitches. But again, it's a fun game. Neither one of these games really do it for me in the sense that I'm not a big Star Wars fan, and I'm not a big NASCAR fan. NASCAR Arcade just feels a little bit too slow for my liking. I want that fast, super arcade action of something like Daytona 2. But I will say that on the oval tracks, Racing a good line, drifting and trying to get to those positions suddenly becomes addicting and trying to bump somebody out of the way and fishtail them is definitely a strategy that helps in this game. And that's the interesting thing about NASCAR, this game in general. I start it, I'm not having that much fun, but after a couple rounds trying to see the checkered flag and get in the best position possible actually becomes addicting and I want to just keep playing the game. It's definitely a sleeper. It sneaks up on you, it gets its hooks into you, and it makes you want to play more. And if you do see an arcade cabinet for this in the wild, definitely throw some quarters in because Hikaru cabinets are getting rare and rare because pretty much if you even try to move an arcade cabinet with a board in it, it could break. People that collect these remove the boards before they move anything and they hot glue the chips down to make sure they have better surface area holding against the motherboard. That is how delicate these things are. So if you ever see a cabinet for them in the wild, definitely play it. And don't grab the wheel too hard because you might just break the damn thing. Sure that, I'll be back next Wednesday with more Sega Racing. I'll have videos for the week as well, but my time is up and this video's time is up. Bye bye